Welcome to Certification Terminal. As part of this series, we will discuss a couple of CompTIA Security Plus certification exam questions and answers. Which security practice is recommended to prevent successful brute force attacks on a Windows system, according to Kathy's concerns? Option A. Rename the administrator account. Option B. Expire the administrator account password monthly. Option C. Disable the administrator account. Option D. Encrypt the contents of the administrator account. The correct answer is Option A. Rename the administrator account. Renaming the default administrator account can help thwart brute force attacks because attackers often target default usernames. By changing the name, Kathy makes it harder for attackers to guess the correct username, thereby increasing security. Next question Who is responsible for generating the certificate signing request? For Bob's web server certificate, considering GeoTrust is the root CA and his company has an intermediate CA. Option A, Bob creates the CSR on the web server. Option B, Bob creates the CSR on the GeoTrust website. Option C, GeoTrust creates the CSR after receiving a request from Bob. Option D, the internal CA creates the CSR after receiving a request from Bob. The correct answer is Option A. Bob creates the CSR on the web server. In this scenario, Bob is responsible for generating the certificate signing request for his web server certificate. This is typically done on the web server itself using software tools or commands provided by the server platform. Bob needs to generate the CSR containing his server's public key and other identifying information, which will be used by the CA to create the digital certificate. Next question. Bob is performing an asset valuation exercise to ensure insurance policies cover the restoration of operations post-asset destruction. Which asset valuation technique should Bob prioritize for this purpose? Option A, replacement cost. Option B, original purchase price. Option C, subject matter expert estimated value. Option D, depreciated value. The correct answer is option A, Replacement cost. This is the most appropriate asset valuation technique for ensuring insurance policies cover the restoration of operations post asset destruction. Replacement cost reflects the expense of replacing an asset with a similar one at the current market price. In the context of insurance, it ensures that the policy covers the full cost of replacing damaged assets, facilitating the restoration of operations. Next question. Steve is working on a new application with significant cryptography requirements. Which technique should he prioritize to guarantee the correct implementation of cryptography? Option A. Hire a vendor to develop a custom cryptographic module. Option B. Test the software prior to use. Option C. Write the cryptographic code directly in his application. Option D. Use a popular open source cryptographic module. The correct answer is. Option D. Use a popular open source cryptographic module. This is the best option among the choices provided. Open source cryptographic modules are developed and reviewed by a wide community of experts, which enhances their reliability and security. By using a popular open source cryptographic module, Steve can leverage well tested and trusted implementations of cryptographic algorithms, reducing the risk of implementation errors and vulnerabilities. Additionally, Open source modules often receive continuous updates and improvements, addressing any discovered vulnerabilities or weaknesses. Next question. Bob is structuring network security controls for a pivotal system governing a manufacturing process and seeks the utmost level of network segmentation. Which control should he prioritize to accomplish this aim? Option A, air gap. Option B, router segmentation. Option C, Firewall zone segmentation. Option D, VLAN segmentation. The correct answer is Option A, air gap. Air gapping involves physically isolating a system from any external networks, essentially creating a gap between the system and other networks. This is the most extreme form of network segmentation as it completely isolates the system from any potential external threats. For critical systems governing manufacturing processes, especially those with high security requirements, 
Air gapping ensures the utmost level of protection by preventing any unauthorized access or communication. Next question. Steve wants to manage a Windows system's graphic user interface remotely and is looking for a secure protocol to achieve this. Which protocol would best suit his requirements? Option A, RDP. Option B, VPN. Option C, SSH. Option D, Telnet. The correct answer is Option A, RDP. RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol, is specifically designed for remote access to graphical user interfaces, GUIs, of Windows systems. It allows users to interact with the desktop of a remote computer as if they were sitting in front of it. RDP provides encryption and authentication mechanisms, making it a secure choice for remote management of Windows systems GUIs. Next question, which forensic tool depends on properly configured system clocks for its optimal operation? Option A, file metadata analysis. Option B, disk hashing. Option C, forensic disk acquisition. Option D, timelining. The correct answer is, option D, timelining. Timelining involves analyzing timestamps from various sources, such as file metadata, system logs, and registry entries to create a chronological timeline of events on a system. Properly configured system clocks are crucial for timelining because accurate timestamps are essential for reconstructing the sequence of events accurately. If system clocks are not synchronized, it can lead to inaccuracies in the timeline analysis, affecting the overall reliability of the forensic investigation. Therefore, timelining is the forensic tool that depends on properly configured system clocks for its optimal operation. Next question, which method is commonly recommended for preventing packet sniffing attacks? Option A, regularly updating software and firmware. Option B, encrypting network communications. Option C, using intrusion detection systems. Option D, implementing strong access controls. The correct answer is, option B, encrypting network communications. Encrypting network communications is a highly recommended method for preventing packet sniffing attacks. When data is encrypted before transmission over a network, even if intercepted by a packet sniffer, the data remains unreadable without the encryption key. This effectively prevents attackers from eavesdropping on sensitive information. Next question, which strategy in risk management involves shifting the responsibility or consequences of a risk to another party? often achieved through insurance coverage or contractual agreements. Option A, accept. Option B, avoid. Option C, mitigate. Option D, transfer. The correct answer is, option D, transfer. Transferring a risk involves shifting the responsibility or consequences of the risk to another party. This is often achieved through insurance coverage, where the risk is transferred to the insurer in exchange for payment of premiums. Contractual agreements can also be used to transfer risk by allocating responsibility to other parties involved in a project or business venture. Next question, which principle states that multiple alterations to a computer system should not occur simultaneously? Option A, change management. Option B, due diligence. Option C, due care. Option D, acceptable use. The correct answer is, Option A, change management. It is the process of controlling changes to a computer system, including planning, scheduling, and implementing changes in a controlled manner. One of the fundamental principles of change management is that multiple alterations to a computer system should not occur simultaneously. This principle helps minimize risks associated with system changes and ensures that changes are properly tested and evaluated before deployment. Next question. While assessing a cryptographic system, it's determined that the algorithm is publicly known, but the key is held confidentially. Which security principle is being upheld? Option A, XOR theorem. Option B, Shannon's maxim. Option C, Caesar's principle. Option D, Kirchhoff's principle. The correct answer is, option D, Kirchhoff's principle. Kirchhoff's principle states that, the security of a cryptographic system should not rely on the secrecy of the algorithm, 
but rather on the secrecy of the key. In the scenario described, the fact that the algorithm is publicly known aligns with Kirchhoff's principle as the security of the system hinges on the confidentiality of the key rather than the secrecy of the algorithm. Next question. Bob is addressing authentication issues with his organization's VPN, utilizing a RADIUS backend. To monitor the traffic, Bob needs to be aware of the ports associated with RADIUS. What are these ports? Option A. TCP ports 1433 and 1521. Option B. UDP ports 1433 and 1521. Option C. TCP ports 1812 and 1813. Option D. UDP ports 1812 and 1813. The correct answer is Option D. UDP ports 1812 and 1813. Radius commonly uses UDP, User Datagram Protocol, for communication, and ports 1812 and 1813 are standard ports for Radius authentication and accounting, respectively. Therefore, Option D correctly identifies the protocol, UDP, and the associated ports, 1812 and 1813, used by Radius for authentication and accounting purposes. Next question. Which supply chain participant is vulnerable to exploitation by attackers who target vulnerabilities in pre-installed software on a device? Option A. Service provider. Option B. Hardware provider. Option C. Software provider. Option D. Cloud provider. The correct answer is Option C. Software provider. Software providers develop and distribute software products, including pre-installed software on devices. Attackers target vulnerabilities in this pre-installed software to exploit security weaknesses and gain unauthorized access or control over devices. Therefore, software providers are vulnerable to exploitation by attackers who target vulnerabilities in pre-installed software. Next question. Which command is most suitable for Bob to capture network packets from the command line? Option A. FDK. Option B. DD. Option C. TCP dump. Option D. Wireshark. The correct answer is Option C. TCP dump. TCP dump is a command line packet analyzer that allows users to capture and analyze network traffic in real time. It is widely used in Unix-like operating systems for network troubleshooting, protocol development, and security analysis. TCP dump provides extensive filtering and packet parsing capabilities, making it a powerful tool for capturing network packets directly from the command line. Next question. What aspect of security does the Metasploit framework primarily concentrate on? Option A. Network mapping. Option B. Exploiting discovered vulnerabilities. Option C. Vulnerability scanning. Option D. Post-compromise analysis. The correct answer is Option B. Exploiting discovered vulnerabilities. The primary focus of the Metasploit framework is on exploiting discovered vulnerabilities. It provides a platform for security researchers, penetration testers, and attackers to develop, test, and execute exploits against systems with known vulnerabilities. Metasploit includes a vast database of exploits and payloads that can be used to compromise systems. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if these questions add value to your preparation. We'll meet in the next video. Take care until then.